So I woke up this morning with anxiety, like every morning from dreams and the condition of my family and my extended family since my mom died is that nobody, not anyone, has ever even tried to join NAMI to be supportive or learn how to deal with my bipolar. And um, luckily I've been out of the hospital for over four years now, but um, I think they condemn like crazy people. I've heard them speak very racist, but I also think they're, they're very prejudiced against um, people that have mental health issues. And my sister, my dad, my brother, and then they've taken my kids. And I've heard them say some negative things that I never told my kids. Um, one thing my youngest daughter said, she said, I'm a, I'm a um, poster child for world preschool. I mean, I don't think I ever photographed her for that. I mean, she helped me and she was my assistant. But it's like the negativity is just so disruptive. Um, at, you know, my mom died and with her died any kind of knowledge or support that I didn't even realize that she was the only one. Um, and I guess the alarming thing is this must go on in other families too. It's not just my family. And we have a, what I just told some people is that your mental health is in the driver's seat. You know, you're just a passenger. Without your mental health, who the heck is driving that car or that airplane? You have to start with mental health and it has to come up in the forefront before we're going to solve some of the issues that we're having in society, including the mass killings. What would make a person do that? You know, where is it? It's in their mind somewhere. But for me personally, I mean, I love my family. I don't expect them to be perfect. But it's almost like they think I should be perfect because that's they grew up in perfect. And um, very, very, um, I'm very estranged from them, but they're pretty entitled. They inherited a bunch of money in a big farm. And all of them, I think, their parents did well. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't really get that. The, the fact that they don't want to learn about mental health and how to be supportive of a member of their family that suffers. And I've had almost 60 hospitalizations. I've probably spent almost three years of my life in psychiatric care. Not because I was taking the medicine that they gave me. It just wasn't working. And so there's a whole society and community issue, too, that if you don't understand that person is suffering... You're going to annihilate them, condemn them, and not take part in your community, which isolates them further, which can cause much, much worse problems. Um, so we all as a community, society, and country need to start to understand our brain chemistry. And that's why in the STEM, I say um, brain education and also art therapy to, to get, you know, if you're abused... I grew up, my dad said, my dad really hated fat people. And so I grew up thinking that I would not be lovable if I was fat. And then that was challenged all during my life because I had lots of friends that I've met and they're very happy and, and they have a weight, they're overweight or obese. And, you know, they seem to be pretty happy in their life. So the whole thing of my youth telling me that I wouldn't be happy if I was fat came from my father. And so he's got some problems, but, um, I, you know, I got an eating disorder. That was part of the reason was to please him. I, I said, maybe you should give me a number like you should weigh 135. Don't go under 135. I didn't really have a number to aim for. It was just less is more. But in this case, less is not more all the time.